Hey, I'm Melissa Fumero. And I'm Stephanie Beatriz. You may know us from television. Nine, nine. And now we're here with our very own podcast, More Better with Stephanie and Melissa. Join us as we take on topics like listening to yourself, the challenge of self-care, and making friends as an adult. We're going to share our struggles. We're going to speak to experts. And we're going to share everything we learn with you. Listen to More Better with Stephanie and Melissa on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. A new season of Bridgerton is here. And with it, a new season of Bridgerton, the official podcast. I'm your host, Gabby Collins. And this season, we are bringing fans even deeper into the ton. Watch season three of the Shondaland series on Netflix. Then fall in love all over again by listening to Bridgerton, the official podcast, on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribe to catch a new episode every Thursday. Hey, it's Perez Hilton from the Perez Hilton Podcast, keeping you in the know. Here's a bit of our show. Taylor Swift is bigger than Michael Jackson ever was. That's nowhere near factual. Yes, it is. Perez, then you don't remember the 80s. I remember the, the 80s. The mania was the most insane thing I've ever witnessed in my life, and nothing will ever be bigger. She is bigger than Michael Jackson no, ever No, she's was. not. Listen to the Perez Hilton Podcast on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. You may know Jackson Pollock, the painter famous for his iconic drip paintings. But what do you know about his wife, artist Lee Krasner? On Death of an Artist, Krasner and Pollock, the story of the artist who reset the market for American abstract painting, just maybe not the one you're thinking of. Listen to Death of an Artist, Krasner and Pollock on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. I won't let my body outweigh, outweigh everything that I'm made of. Won't spend my life trying to change. I'm learning to love who I am. I am strong, I feel free. I know every part of me is beautiful. And I will always outweigh. If you feel it, put your hands in the air. Show some love to the new while you're there. Let's take it one day at a time. Did you and I outweigh? Happy Saturday, Outway fam. My guest today is Emily Riley, and she comes to us through our mutual friend, Kat Defada, who's a licensed therapist and she specializes in eating disorders. So just a little shout out there to therapists that have their lane and stuff that they specialize in because. I know Kat has helped countless people journey through this. And if you're thinking about seeing a therapist, not that it has to be Kat because maybe you don't even live here, but make sure for whatever reason that you're going for. And if it is an eating disorder that you seek out, like, hey, do you happen mm-hmm. to specialize in this? That's just my little pro tip for the weekend. <laughs> my little pro tip would be try to find someone that knows what they're talking about when it comes to eating disorders. But anyway, Kat mm-hmm. told me about Emily and you were actually on her podcast, You Need Therapy in 2020. Really great episode if y'all want to go check that out. Emily, do you happen to know the title of that episode? Yeah, I think it's When Losing Everything Gave Me Everything. Well, so I encourage y'all to go hear more of Emily's story because today is just going to be a snippet. But I have Emily's bio and it says here, Emily, people lover, sunshine addict, latte obsessed human, (laughs) being with the painful experience of choosing eating disorder recovery in 2014, and then simultaneously walking through an unexpected journey with cancer. And this was all going down at 28 years old. You were only, gosh, yeah, I try to picture myself at that time, like (laughs) juggling those two things at the same time. And I know you're originally from Birmingham, Alabama, shout out. Yes. On Instagram, you're at Emily Brooke Riley. And I'm just going to pass the mic to you if you just want to share your journey with us. Thank you so much, Amy, for having me and giving me the space to share my story. Yeah, I think my journey over the last 10 years has been one of authenticity. And I think anytime you pursue authenticity, it's it has a lot of ups and downs. It has a lot of raw pain and emotions. But I chose so to move to Nashville after graduating from Auburn University in 2013. As a young professional, I had always had my eye on Nashville and, you know, originally felt like, especially being from the South, you think, oh, I'm going to move to Nashville. 
get married, have a family. And um, when I moved here, there was a lot of healing within my own heart and story that needed to take place that honestly, I did not acknowledge or come to see until I was out of really like the environments of being known, especially in college and involvement, sorority and all the things that happen, especially like going back to high school, even um, I think an eating disorder was really easy for me from what it felt like to hide in because from the outside looking in, even like going back to middle school, just wanting and desiring acceptance from people. And I think for me, I pursued that in feeling that would come through the way I looked. And so, of course, going back even to that age, um, Liz McGuire was super influential in my life. And one thing that I think about her, she was pretty and popular and she, in a sense, to me, had a smaller body size than me. And so I thought, okay, that's what I need to be in order to be loved and popular. So starting at age 13, I started dieting and in the end of seventh grade and just using food and exercise in an unhealthy way. And so from seventh grade on to the time period that I moved to Nashville and seemingly faced people who were getting to know me and not in the context of a social setting or sorority or my family, they were getting to know me for me. And as I began getting to a place of authenticity and relationships, um, it was just exposed that I had an eating disorder. So in 2014, after being here for about a year, I started working with Reba Sloan, who um, is a dietitian um, in Nashville, that she walked me through the whole process of what eating disorder recovery would look like. And so I started that in 2014, um, which of course, if, if anyone has been through that process, it's a three-tiered process of working with a therapist and a physician and then also a dietitian. And so started that primarily outpatient settings. And then it's a journey. I mean, I know that you've probably had other individuals talk about it, but I think when I first started into recovery, Reba told me it was going to be a seven-year process. And I remember thinking like, I did not have seven years. At that point, I was 22 and I'm like, and next year I'm going to be married and starting a family. I don't have a boyfriend, but I am going to be married next year. <laughs> um, and so I really had a lot of doubt and honestly went back and forth and like, is this going to be worth it? And so it honestly took up until probably 2017. So about three to four years and deep work of recovery that I really found myself in a place of freedom. And that looked a lot like not being motivated by exercise, not being motivated by restricting food, not being motivated by lying about the food that I did eat or didn't eat or what exercise I did or didn't do, but also just like not being obsessed with my body and my clothes and how my clothes fit. And so 2017, I really, I would say, began to walk in a new place of freedom and healing, but the next like two years continued just in personal growth, therapy, and, and different things, just walking through life. The summer of 2018, I had a swollen lymph node that um, was found in uh, on my body. And so I, at the time, honestly thought it was like an infection. No one actually had any thought to it being cancer. And so I went through a process of doctor's appointments and testing. And so in January of 2019, um, I was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So that is a type of blood cancer that takes place when there's like a DNA mutation um, that happens incorrectly with your lymphocytes. So for me, I think walking a journey of, okay, I had walked this huge, like long process of finding freedom from an eating disorder and then having like two years of freedom in terms of like 2017, 2018, really thriving, enjoying my life as a 28 year old, and then walking into just this experience of, especially with cancer, I know that it's hard culturally. I think that cancer, especially for someone that struggled with an eating disorder, I mean, I know you've probably heard this, like people will say like cancer is called that you eat too much sugar or, you know, the foods that you put in your body are a result of like now you having cancer or you not taking care of your body. I feel like that's a lot of misconception around cancer, especially because 
having an eating disorder, I think when I was first diagnosed, it's like, what did I do? Like, what did I do wrong? What food did I not eat? Did I not eat enough spinach? Did I eat too many carbs? Like all these different things that started to almost start me over again in a place of like, wait, I've already like come to a place of freedom from these thoughts. But I think our culture really has painted cancer into this picture of like, it's your fault that you have cancer or you did something that to your body or that you put something in your body that has now gotten you to this place. And so that is like the two journeys that then like merge together. I walked through cancer with both of my parents and I remember getting into a fight with my mom's oncologist over food because I was in, I would say, an orthorexia phase of my eating disorder. Sometimes they were all happening at the same time. Yeah. Other times it was like, oh, this is my disordered food situation, situation, (laughs) body issue, choice of of the season or whatever. But I was of that mindset. And I remember being appalled at the fact that my mom's oncologist said that I just needed to get food in my mom's body. She didn't care what it was. And I said, oh, no, 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 no. My mom needs green juice, carrot juice. Like if she's even going to have sugar, the oncologist was just looking Mm -hmm. at me like, no, I'm about to pump your mom full of chemo. Mm -hmm. And it's very crucial that she just gets calories. I don't care where they come from. And I thought Mm. she was Looney Tune. I thought she was crazy. (laughs) And I knew more than she did because I was this, you know, self-proclaimed quote unquote healthy person that (laughs) was anti-processed sugar because of X, Y, Z. And really it's because it just didn't fit into my neat little box of foods that were allowed. For sure. And then I was trying to take them away from my mother as well <laughs> because she had cancer. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. Hey there, I'm Dr. Maya Shunker, and I'm a scientist who studies human behavior. Many of us have experienced a moment in our lives that changes everything. A moment that instantly divides our life into a before and an after. On my podcast, A Slight Change of Plans, I talk to people about navigating these very moments. The last couple of years has been the hardest season of our marriage for sure. I'm surprised our marriage survived it. I think we both are. I think we both were barely holding on. Mm. Nothing compares to how hard this is. Their stories are full of candor, awe, and hard-won wisdom. And you'll hear from scientists who teach us how we can be more resilient in the face of change. True behavior change is really identity change. Every action you take is a vote for the type of person you wish to become. Listen to A Slight Change of Plans on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. The Therapy for Black Girls podcast is an NAACP and Webby award-winning podcast dedicated to all things mental health, personal development, and all of the small decisions we can make to become the best possible versions of ourselves. Here... We have the conversations that help Black women decipher how their past inform who they are today and use that information to decide who they want to be moving forward. We chat about things like how to establish routines that center self-care, what burnout looks and feels like, and defining what aspects of our lives are making us happy and what parts are holding us back. I'm your host, Dr. Joy Harden Bradford, a licensed psychologist in Atlanta, Georgia. And I can't wait for you to join the conversation every Wednesday. Listen to the Therapy for Black Girls podcast on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Take good care, and we'll see you there. Hey fam, I'm Simone Boyce. I'm Danielle Robay. And we're the hosts of The Bright Side, the daily podcast from Hello Sunshine that is guaranteed to light up your day. Every weekday, we bring you conversations with the culture makers who inspire us. Like our recent episode with legendary singer, songwriter, and mental health advocate, Jewel. All of our hearts are destined to be broken at some point. It's what we do with the pieces that make us extraordinary. And so it's each of our jobs to learn to become alchemists, to turn the poison into medicine. And we all have some kind of resource available to us. Listen to The Bright Side from Hello Sunshine on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Mm. 
Hi, listener. I'm Carol Fisher, the host of The Girlfriends, Our Lost Sister. I'm so excited for you to hear the brand new season where we're uncovering a 35-year-old mystery. But for those of you who didn't hear season one or just want to listen to it again, you can now get access to all episodes of that first season of The Girlfriends 100% ad-free through the iHeart True Crime Plus subscription, which is available exclusively on Apple Podcasts. You'll also get access to every single episode of The Girlfriends, Our Lost Sister, ad-free and one week early, only available to iHeart True Crime Plus subscribers. So what are you waiting for? Head to Apple Podcasts, search for iHeart True Crime Plus, and subscribe today. things that when I started into so oncology hematology so I had a hematologist because that was more of like the blood cancer physician or provider that treated that type of cancer and I remember asking her did I eat something to cause this like does cancer or because I remember like people would be like you know cancer can be caused by eating a lot of sugar and I'm like I love sugar I love sugar is a good thing it was just so funny because people would be like oh you know when they do your pet scan like they use sugar to make sure they can see like where the cancer is. And, you know, it was just all these things about food was coming up again. Exactly what you said. They, they told me, they're like, you're going to have horrible mouth sores. You're not going to be able to eat. So honestly, just get whatever you can. Like it's honestly going to be like mashed potatoes. It's going to be like your main source of food. And of course, like in 2018, 2019, I guess 2019 primarily, that's when I was going through treatment, but I was like, potatoes, like a starch, like I need something else. Like what if I need nutrients and all these things are like, I just can't eat potatoes. But then also like that disordered thought of like potatoes, are they good? Are they bad? Like I need to be eating spinach and fortified foods. So yeah, completely. It's, it's such a a weird journey to be on because my hematologist, again, she was like, sugar does not cause cancer. There's been so many different types of research done around that. And there's not like a like sure source that can like confirm that or like the foods that you ate, like there's nothing that you did to cause this. This is like a part of your story and a part of your body's way of fighting something that is not supposed to be in your body. And so it was a whole new journey for me within like my eating disorder and then having cancer because it was like, oh, all the foods that I had like told myself that were the only foods I could eat now I couldn't even like process them or like have any type of desire to eat them. So it's like, I remember she said, you're going to want to eat all white foods. And I was like, what does that mean? She's like anything with like mayonnaise based or like ranch or potatoes, things that like your body just needs like soothing foods. And so I just remember thinking like, I'm so grateful that I'm at the point that I am with my eating disorder, because I think having to go through that and not having the basis of the work that I had done, it would have been a lot harder for me to even like nourish my body in that way, because the foods that they wanted me to eat were probably the foods that I once felt like, oh, they're bad foods. I need like good foods. When in reality, all food is good food. A lot of people have this mindset, this way of thinking this, uh, a saying that's similar to what I'm about to share. But this one in particular is from Donald Miller. And he is an amazing author if you're not familiar with him, but he likes to approach adversity or things that happen in life with, okay, what does this make possible is one question. Mm. Another one is what big thing is this preparing me for? that, you know, you have no idea in your life what's Mm -hmm. down the line. So when you're going through something really difficult, how can you help shift that mindset with those two questions? And it's just questions to keep in your back pocket because, Mm -hmm. you know, I hear you talking about going through eating disorder recovery and Mm -hmm. the knowledge you were receiving and all of the treatment and the help and the tools Mm -hmm. And then you saw some of it coming back up for you as you're yeah. fighting cancer. But yeah. it's like, I, I, I don't know, my, my answer to those questions for you would be back when you were sh- having the eating disorder is like, what big thing is this preparing me for? And it was, if you choose to see it this way, then once you had the cancer, it's like, oh, 
Yeah, it sucked that I went through that then, but it helped prepare me for Mm -hmm. this because otherwise I might be spiraling another direction. Wow, that's good. So just those are questions that he shared uh, and he's shared with other people, but he specifically shared them on my Four Things podcast, actually that Kat Tafata did with me. And it was one of my favorite interviews ever, but I just, I love the way they're so simply put because even with my mom's cancer journey, it's like, oh, I can see the good that came out of it, even though the cancer sucked and my mom is no longer with us. She has a legacy and she has a purpose Mm -hmm. and we have a whole movement dedicated to her for spreading joy. And, you know, yes, that all happened and it came from her cancer, Mm -hmm. but still it's just sometimes when you're in the middle of it, you know, it's hard to ask those questions or to even have yes. the, how, how to even phrase it in your mind yeah. that there's got to be some good in here somewhere. And so that's why I like Donald's two questions. Cause it's not like, Oh, how can we make this good? Or what is good about this totally horrible, crappy situation? It's what does this make possible? And what big thing, even bigger is this preparing me for? I'm sure that you've been able to be there for other people and come alongside them that either have had an eating disorder or have cancer or both. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I think that is where, especially going through it, even going through eating disorder recovery and having to choose every day to believe truth about myself and about food, my body, it taught me and like helped lay the foundation for when I was fighting for my life and fighting to live and fighting to, you know, obviously like take on something that like, I didn't expect, but also I had the tools in my tool belt to be able to walk through this season where it's like, okay, like I know who I am. I know that like my identity is not in my hair, that my identity is not in my body, that my identity is like, I'm not loved because of those things. I'm loved because I'm Emily and I am who I am. And I think that also like just what you said, having the foundation and toolbox to then walk through something that you may not even know that you're going to walk through. If it's even for you or for yourself, I think there's a quote that says like everyone's suffering in some way. You just don't know a lot of the times, like everyone is suffering or will suffer or has suffered. And so relatability in terms of walking through both eating disorder recovery, and then also, you know, walking through cancer, I think it's been such a a weird journey of like relating to people and, and saying like, Hey, like, I know what that's like. I know exactly how you feel in terms of like being anxious around food or getting chemo for eight hours and not knowing how you're going to feel the next day or what that's going to look like. And so suffering has brought so much relatability in my life to where it's like, Oh, I see people and know people differently and deeper or more deeply than I did before choosing authenticity and and moving to Nashville because it's brought so much growth in my own story that I would have never been able to get to apart from hard, hard things. Well, and I know your particular journey is cancer and this is a eating disorder recovery podcast. So most people are listening, they can probably relate to the eating disorder part, but hopefully not the cancer part too, but you could insert other things that happen with our bodies. If it's an autoimmune Mm -hmm. thing or a, Mm -hmm. you're suddenly cannot have gluten or you're intolerant to certain things and you have to restrict in a way or only eat certain foods and how some of that can be very, you know, it can kind of, especially if you have an eating disorder pass, it might hit you different where you're like, oh shoot, wait, no, I want to eat this or what, what's going to happen if I restrict this? Is that going to trigger something in my brain? And it's just that, just lean into the the tools that you were given that got you into recovery. Lean into the experts if you have them in your life. Lean into your community if you have Mm -hmm. people, family, because like you shouldn't have to walk through those types of things alone. I hope that you have at least somebody, but I can't imagine. Mm -hmm. But I know there's just other people out there that are juggling multiple things side by side with recovery that are real things that affect your body, your food intake and whatnot. And so if you can't relate to the cancer piece, you may be able to relate to something else and then realize like, oh, you have hope and that Emily Mm -hmm. navigated her way through it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, I think it's for sure just like, everyone's journey is different, but like I said, you, you know, for sure have the tools in your tool belt. And I'm so thankful that in 2014, that even moving to Nashville thinking I'm going to be here for a year and then, you know, get married and have a family and move away. 
I've been here almost 10 years next year. And it's like all the things that I've gone through while I've been in Nashville look, has looked so different than what I, you know, would have thought, but it was all for a purpose. And I see even just like what you said about your mom, seeing the legacy and the impact that she has had. And then also knowing like, okay, the things that I walked through at that time, at that you know specific period of my life were for a purpose. And I may not know, you know, exactly what the purpose was, but I can walk in faith and and joy and hope and know that hope ultimately heals. And it's a beautiful gift to walk with other people in in seasons of suffering, but also whether it's eating disorder or cancer or loss of a child or whatever you're facing, I think it's always choosing, like you said, to, you know, choose joy, but also, you know, seek out help from experts and, and allow them to give you the tools that you need to succeed in those, in those really hard seasons. Hey there, I'm Dr. Maya Shunker, and I'm a scientist who studies human behavior. Many of us have experienced a moment in our lives that changes everything. A moment that instantly divides our life into a before and an after. On my podcast, A Slight Change of Plans, I talk to people about navigating these very moments. The last couple of years has been the hardest season of our marriage for sure. I'm surprised our marriage survived it. I think we both are. I think we both were barely holding on. Mm. Nothing compares to how hard this is. Their stories are full of candor, awe, and hard-won wisdom. And you'll hear from scientists who teach us how we can be more resilient in the face of change. True behavior change is really identity change. Every action you take is a vote for the type of person you wish to become. Listen to A Slight Change of Plans on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. The Therapy for Black Girls podcast is an NAACP and Webby award-winning podcast dedicated to all things mental health, personal development, and all of the small decisions we can make to become the best possible versions of ourselves. Here, we have the conversations that help Black women decipher how their past inform who they are today and use that information to decide who they want to be moving forward. We chat about things like how to establish routines that center self-care, what burnout looks and feels like, and defining what aspects of our lives are making us happy and what parts are holding us back. I'm your host, Dr. Joy Harden Bradford, a licensed psychologist in Atlanta, Georgia, and I can't wait for you to join the conversation every Wednesday. Listen to the Therapy for Black Girls podcast on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Take good care, and we'll see you there. Hi, listener. I'm Carol Fisher, the host of The Girlfriends, Our Lost Sister. I'm so excited for you to hear the brand new season where we're uncovering a 35-year-old mystery. But for those of you who didn't hear season one or just want to listen to it again, you can now get access to all episodes of that first season of The Girlfriends 100% ad-free through the iHeart True Crime Plus subscription, which is available exclusively on Apple Podcasts. You'll also get access to every single episode of The Girlfriends, Our Lost Sister, ad-free and one week early, only available to iHeart True Crime Plus subscribers. So what are you waiting for? Head to Apple Podcasts, search for iHeart True Crime Plus, and subscribe today. Hey fam, I'm Simone Boyce. I'm Danielle Robay. And we're the hosts of The Bright Side, the daily podcast from Hello Sunshine that is guaranteed to light up your day. Every weekday, we bring you conversations with the culture makers who inspire us. Like our recent episode with legendary singer, songwriter, and mental health advocate, Jewel. All of our hearts are destined to be broken at some point. It's what we do with the pieces that make us extraordinary. And so it's each of our jobs to learn to become alchemists, to turn the poison into medicine. And we all have some kind of resource available to us. Listen to The Bright Side from Hello Sunshine on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm 
got two questions before we wrap one related to the eating disorder and one related to the cancer. Yeah. So what was the sign that like you, someone was like, Hey, I think you have an eating disorder. Like what was that aha moment? Or was there something? Yeah. Cause again, I think some people are saying they don't, they don't know if they do yeah. or they don't. And then the yeah. cancer related one is you said your lymph node was swollen, mm-hmm. but how did you even know that to begin with? Because also, too, it's just a reminder to know your body and pr- seek help or yeah. go to the doctor if you need to. For sure. Those are great questions. Yeah. So in terms of an eating disorder, I know, Amy, like you could, you know, relate and anyone who's walked through a journey with an eating disorder or, you know, recovery, I think a lot of it is you are disordered, but you don't really like acknowledge that you are. You just feel like you're normal or you're like, everyone is like this and no one actually like is or they're hiding it. So when I started in middle school pursuing, you know, diet behaviors with food and exercise, a lot of my journey throughout middle school and high school, like involved a lot of lying. And that was more so like, Oh, I'm going to lie because I've got to tell people like, Oh, I ate before I came. So I'm not going to eat here. Or, Oh, I've actually only been at the Y for this certain amount of time. When in reality, I've been there a much longer period of time. And so I think for me, like people probably knew something was off. But then when I was in college, I think it's easier to have eating disorders in those environments. But then when I moved to Nashville and moved into an apartment with two other girls, I think the close knit of like, oh, I'm living life in an adult sense of like, we kind of know each other's schedule. I can't really hide from not eating and and over-exercising and those types of things. And so for me, it it really all started like one night we were going to watch frozen, um, as like roommates, this was back like 2014, 2013. And my roommate was like, Oh my gosh, like we're going to make sure he's and like eat and order food in. And I just had like all this panic all over my face because I'm like, Oh my gosh, like I feel trapped in this apartment because like my way out would be to like go and walk or go and like to target and not like, and avoid any situation with like food that I felt was unsafe or bad quotation marks. And so, you know, what really started for me in terms of the exposure process was living with those two girls that saw me every day and really noticed patterns in me that were not healthy. And they had really healthy relationships with food and exercise. And I think living with them, the contrast, they really didn't even know me that well, but it really ended up that night because I think they could pick up that I was super anxious about eating the sugar cookies. And one of the girls was like, and like, we love you so much. We've only known you for like five months, but like, we just have seen a pattern with food and exercise that we're concerned about. And so for me, I think it, it was the process obviously of like living in close community with people, but I had to choose obviously like in those moments, like having roommates and that type of thing, I think it can be easy sometimes when like you may live live alone or you may be new to Nashville or new to a city that you're like, I don't have anyone that actually knows me. Well, at least I think for me, it was like walking in those relationships with roommates. Um, And I'm sure everyone has had some experience with roommates, but yeah, does that answer the question? I feel like that's a long way home, but (laughs) yeah, it does. I was just curious for you, like what what that moment looked like. I get yeah. curious yeah. about what is the final straw that gets you to realize, oh, and in your case, it was people that cared about you that noticed certain things and sat you down and shared it with you. You know, everyone's story is a little bit different, but I yeah. just like to share kind of the the light bulb moment. Yeah. And then the lymph node. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. The the lymph node. So in the summer of 20, 2018, so as all most women do in the summer, if you don't, that's fine too. But like I went and got a bikini wax um, for a beach trip and my lymph node, I had like a swollen lymph node right by my bikini line, which I know is usually like lymph nodes in your neck or like under your armpit are ones that typically people are aware of. Um, but you actually have like 500 different lymph nodes all over your body. And so I just had like this raised like place that once I had my bikini wax, I was like, oh, wow, that's not supposed to be there. And so I had a friend look at it who was in the medical field. And she's like, I think you need to go look, get this looked at. So I went to the doctor and she's like, oh, I think it's just like an infected lymph node. Like watch it, see what happens. It should go down in the next like week or so. And then I went home. So that was like from July to November of 2018. It was still there. And I think also like as women, as human beings, a lot of times like something that's happening with your body 
it's like, you know, it's there, but you don't want to acknowledge it because it's not like impacting your everyday life, but it's like, oh, this is not probably supposed to be here, but I'm just going to like live my life because I'm too busy to care about myself because I'm caring for other people and working. And so my sister is a nurse practitioner. And so I went home for Thanksgiving break and she looked at it and she was like, you got to go get this looked at. And so in January of 2019, so it had, it had been there. I mean, I'm not really even sure for how long, but it was like obviously noticed in like the summer of 2018. And then January of 2019 was actually when I was like referred, 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 and then finally landed at like a general surgeon who they had thought that it was like hernia or something that they were just like, you're really healthy in terms of like your age, you have no like cancer symptoms, like weight loss or loss of sleep or fatigue. Like they literally had no thought in their head, like this is going to be cancer, but um, they're like, we're going to biopsy it. And so I got a biopsy, like I went on a Friday to my, like the general surgeon. And then on that following Monday, she was like, oh, we're taking it out and we're biopsying it. And then it was like on that following Thursday that they got the the pathology report back. So yeah, it was just a random lump that I had that was somewhere that shouldn't have been. And I, I really did at the time, didn't think anything about it. I was just like, oh, I've been in the lake or, you know, I've had, I worked a summer camp and it's probably just like an infected lymph node. So I think just being super aware of your body. And I think that can also be hard for someone who has walked through an eating disorder or who has had some type of like just obsession with your body or just like having this sense of like, I want to care for my body, but, and having a healthy awareness of what's happening on the inside and also on the outside of your body. Um, because for sure, I think when they finally diagnosed me, it was like stage two going into stage three, it was in multiple lymph nodes within like my pelvis. So I think just being aware of your body and knowing like, Hey, this looks abnormal. I need to go to the doctor. For me, I think it was one of those things that like, I knew something wasn't right, but I honestly didn't want to acknowledge it because I was scared. I'm thinking of a, you know, yours was a bikini wax (laughs) and obviously the lymph node could have stood out to you, but the bikini wax person, (laughs) technician or whatever, it's crazy that she was the first one. It makes me think of, I knew a woman once where she fell off her horse and she went in, she broke her collarbone. And when they were doing the x-ray for her collarbone, they found a tumor. And otherwise Mm. that tumor may not have ever been detected at least as early as it was. And they were able to get it. And so it is kind of crazy how sometimes you, you realize certain things that are going on in your body because cancer is crazy. You can't, the lymph node, like you said, if it's swollen, my mom's particular cancer ended up growing on the outside of her body eventually. Before that Mm, though, it was internal. And that's a lot of times how you see it. And even in the x-rays or on the screen, doctors sometimes would be like, well, see this dot here. We don't really know if that's a mass, like this is a mass that might be a mass, but it just looks like this blob on the screen. And then witnessing it grow aggressively on the outside, Mm -hmm. you see how wild this cancer is. I would have never thought, I'm like you, I would have just been like, oh, did I get bit? Or yeah, do I have like ingrown hair situation? And what is (laughs) happening? So this is just, a. I love that this is also a PSA and a reminder to pay attention and ask questions. And like you went to a friend and then you went to your sister and then you, you know, it doesn't mean you always have to just book a doctor's appointment ASAP. Cause I don't know some no. people, depending on your <laughs> yeah. insurance or what that might be daunting, but do you sure. have anybody yeah. you can call yeah. that's like, Hey, can you just look at this yes. for me? Yes. Someone told me one time, like once you've walked through eating disorder recovery, or you are going through eating disorder recovery, or you're choosing that journey. It's like, even when I'm in the grocery store, if I walk by someone who may be struggling or who may be in the middle of, you know, that journey, I don't know. You can just sense it. It's a, it's an interesting like connection where I feel like even people I don't know, I'm like, I wonder if that's something that they're struggling with or they're walking through. Um, and not that I would say something, but I think you just, once you're like, have walked a similar journey, whether it's eating disorder or cancer, it's like, or I'll see someone that may be bald or maybe, you know, just like, functioning in a way that looks similar to how I functioned going through chemo. It's like this heart connection. So yeah, I think that's, it's always being reminded of the influence that you have on other people and to use that influence for good, yeah. for sure. Well, Emily, thank you so much for sharing your stories with us. Thank you, Amy. You have yeah. definitely been through a lot and can use that now that you're on the other side. 
of it to to be that encouragement for others. So thank you for doing it here on that way. Thank you so much for having me. It was great to be here. I'm Melissa Fumero. And I'm Stephanie Beatriz. You may know us from television. Nine, nine. And now we're here with our very own podcast, More Better with Stephanie and Melissa. Join us as we take on topics like listening to yourself, the challenge of self-care, and making friends as an adult. We're going to share our struggles. We're going to speak to experts. And we're going to share everything we learn with you. Listen to More Better with Stephanie and Melissa on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. A new season of Bridgerton is here. And with it, a new season of Bridgerton, the official podcast. I'm your host, Gabby Collins. And this season, we are bringing fans even deeper into the ton. Watch season three of the Shondaland series on Netflix. Then fall in love all over again by listening to Bridgerton, the official podcast on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribe to catch a new episode every Thursday. Hey, it's Perez Hilton from the Perez Hilton Podcast, keeping you in the know. Here's a bit of our show. Taylor Swift is bigger than Michael Jackson ever was. That's nowhere near factual. Yes, it is. Perez, then you don't remember the 80s. I remember the The 80s. The mania was the most insane thing I've ever witnessed in my life, and nothing will ever be bigger. She is bigger than Michael Jackson ever was. No, she's not. Listen to the Perez Hilton Podcast on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. You may know Jackson Pollock, the painter famous for his iconic drip paintings. But what do you know about his wife, artist Lee Krasner? On Death of an Artist, Krasner and Pollock, the story of the artist who reset the market for American abstract painting, just maybe not the one you're thinking of. Listen to Death of an Artist, Krasner and Pollock on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts.